Hello? Anybody there? You really expecting an answer? I was just checking. Well, you checked. Now open the door and let's see what's in there. Joey, the door is locked. Yeah, I can see that. Looks like it's up to me. Hmm, charming. Well, what do you see? Nothing. Yet. I'll see if there's a way to open that door. I should probably take a closer look before messing with it. Looks like a paper clip. Hey, Dollface, I got a present for you. Joey, a paper clip just blew past my shoe. It's all yours, darling. What do I do with this? Try opening the door with it. Does that actually work? Sure, why not? I have no idea how to do this. Just keep trying, darling. It's an old door. It shouldn't be any trouble. It keeps slipping. This isn't going to... work. Oh, ye of little faith. No ghosts. Not yet. You think something's coming? Not sure. I feel... something. Might as well take a look around first, just in case. All I could find was a newspaper clipping. Looks like an obituary. Oh, Joey. Yeah? I think I found it. Well, will you look at that? What's he doing out there? There's only one way to find out. I am not climbing out onto the window ledge. What are you kidding? Leave the dangerous stuff to the dead guy. A spook on a window ledge. Now I've seen everything. All right, let's see what this spook has to say. Yeah, I know the drill. I'll wait here. Hello. Stay back. I mean it. I'll do it. All right, pal. Take a deep breath and relax. Relax? Relax? You think I can relax? If I could relax, you'd think I'd be out here? I don't know. Why didn't you tell me about it? Don't come any closer. I swear, I'll jump. Jump? You're here to kill yourself? Maybe. I don't know. I can't think of anything else to do. Um, I think this might be too little too late. What do you mean? I mean you can't kill yourself. You're already dead. What? I said you're already dead. That's... Sick. You're insane. Get off my ledge. Hey, let's get out of this rain. What rain? Um, this rain? Take a look around. It's pouring cats and dogs out here. I don't feel any rain. That's because... Ah, forget it. Hey, are you Alan Riken? It's been a while. You might not remember. No, I don't remember at all. Although... I've had a lot on my mind. Yeah, that's why I'm here. I thought you could use someone to talk to. Did my wife put you up to this? Wife? No, no. Just here for an old friend. Okay. I'm not sure who you are, but you seem to know me. What do you want to talk about? Listen, Alan. Concentrate and take a look around. Doesn't anything seem... strange? Out of place or off kilter? No. You don't remember falling? Falling? No! Of course not! I came out here and stayed! I haven't jumped yet! Right, right. Never mind. 
Listen, Alan, concentrate and take a look around. Doesn't anything seem... strange? Out of place or off kilter? No. You don't remember falling? Falling? No! Of course not! I came out here and stayed! I haven't jumped yet. Right, right. Never mind. Surely things can't be all that bad. Oh, surely they can. Do you know what it's like to lose everything? To have everything you loved and struggled for just vanish? I know something about that, yeah. Then you know what I'm going through. Nice view, huh? Is it? Yeah, I guess it is. Makes you feel like you're king of the world. I used to feel that way. Now, I'm not sure. So what happened, Alan? What brought you to this? A fire destroyed my entire stock. The resulting lawsuits bankrupted me. That's no reason to kill yourself. You don't understand. I spent my life building this business. When it happened, I lost everything. Everyone deserted me. People I thought were friends. Even Sandra. Sandra? My wife. Where is your wife? She left. She won't even talk to me. I just get phone calls from her lawyer. I thought she'd stick by me. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Hey, your wife's inside. Really? Yeah, she wants to talk to you. I don't believe you. Come on, now's your chance to win her back. Well, all right. There she is. That's, That's my, my wife? wife? That's, That's Sandra? Sandra? Wife? Sure, don't you recognize her? It's hard to see clearly for some reason. Is that red hair? She dyed it. Go on, talk to her. Sandra? Is that really you? Uh, sure. Sure, it's me. I'm Sandra. Why are you here, Sandra? Well, uh... I came to laugh at you, Alan. What? What? You're pathetic. Why do you think I left? I just wanted to look down on you one more time, just to confirm what a big loser you are. You're right. Hey, you gonna let her talk to you like that? Huh? Stand up for yourself, man! Stand up for myself? You gonna let people push you around all your life? You're right. You're right! Let her have it. You know what, Sandra? Screw you! I'm broke, yeah. The business is gone, yeah. Life gets tough once in a while. A marriage is a partnership, Sandra. You certainly were happy to stick around when things were good. Yeah, when I was bringing home 200 grand a year, I wasn't such a loser. But when I'm in trouble, you're nowhere to be found. But you know what? You were just dragging me down. Without you around, I'm going to do even better. I might not be much, Sandra, but I'm better than you. You're not worth dying over. Get out of here. Bravo. That felt good. Quite a rush, huh? I feel like I can do anything. Like I've got a second chance. Uh... First thing I'm going to do is buy back this office. Yeah, about that? I made some mistakes before. I won't make them again. Uh... I might have fallen once, but... But... Wait. I fell, didn't I? I remember now. I'm sorry. You're not really my wife, are you? No, I'm not. I went out onto the ledge, and I slipped. I don't know why I went out there, but I wasn't going to jump. I was confused. For some reason, it seemed like the right thing to do. Stupid. Stupid. What a stupid way to die. Hey, what happened to that can-do attitude of yours? It makes no difference now, does it? Maybe not to anyone else, but it does to you. Huh. Maybe you're right. So what do I do now? Just take a hold of this. Okay, do it.
Another day, another satisfied spook. I'd call this day done, wouldn't you? Yeah, although... What? Isn't there something we're supposed to do tonight? I don't think so. I feel like we're forgetting something. I'd ignore that feeling if I were you. Seven p.m. The Park Gallery with Nishanti. Oh crap! What time is it? Seven fifteen. Damn it! She's going to kill me. What's your problem? The gallery opening. Don't you remember? She invited us to go. Us. All right, me. But you're still coming. You really want to go to some stupid gallery? We're going. I'm not flicking out on her again. It's not nice. Fine. Whatever. Do what you like. It's not like I have a choice. Here we go, the Park Gallery. It's on 18th Street by 10th Avenue. <sighs> Let's go and get this over with. Come on, let's get going. Hold your horses, will ya? I'm coming. Wow, I feel cultured already. Shh! Hi, are you here for the opening? Yes. Great! But I'm sorry, I think you came on the wrong night. The public opening's in two days. Tonight's a private showing. Oh no, I'm with someone. Nishanti Sharma? Is she here? Really? Let me check. Nish? Nish? Yes? Someone here says she knows you. That must be Rosa. It's alright, Josie. She's with me. Okay, thanks. Sorry about that. You know how it is. Sure. Anyway, I'm Josie Park, and this is the Park Gallery. Man, she's clever. I bet she came up with that all by herself. Go on in. Have fun. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Hi, sorry I'm late. Don't worry about it. How'd you find the place? The internet. Oh, of course. I should really try using it one of these days. I know I've been kind of flaky lately. Oh, don't worry about that. No need to stress on my account. Besides, you look exhausted. Are you all right? I'm fine. All right, if you say so. So, who's your friend? I'm sorry, that was rude of me. This is Monique Stallman. Monique, this is my neighbor, Rosa. The one I was telling you about. You were talking about me? She was just telling me that she had a famous writer for a neighbor. Famous? I'm hardly famous. I haven't had anything published yet. She writes ghost stories, Monique. Nish, please. Go on, tell her. It's hardly the time or place. What's wrong? 
Oh, Monique here has a fascinating ghost story to tell. I wouldn't call it fascinating, per se. Please, it sends shivers down my spine. Wait until you hear it. It's about Frank Lyons. Frank Lyons? The actor? Nish, please. Sorry, Monique, just getting carried away. I would like to hear the story, actually. See? I told you. Well, all right. But let's not talk about it here. Here's my card. If you want to talk, drop by my office tomorrow. We can discuss it in private. Thanks. I'll drop by. Thanks for inviting me. I'm glad you could make it. For a while, I was worried that I'd be here all by myself. But Monique was interesting company. So, how are you doing? Oh, you know, same old thing. Practicing my flute, walking the dog, trying to get out more. Although this weather isn't making it easy. I think I'll browse around. Sure, Rosa. Enjoy yourself. Hi, Nishanti. Hello, Rosa. I think I'll browse around. Sure, Rosa. Enjoy yourself. Rosa, you're not leaving now, are you? Um... We were just about to get started on the wine. Why don't you join us? Come on, come on, let's get out of here. Well, please stay. We hardly see enough of each other as it is. Okay. Wonderful. Fantastic. Come on, Josie. There's five of us here. That means it's a party. Pour more of that wine and let's get it started. <sighs> Oh my head. What happened? How did I get here? Is this how your generation treats the duty? What? Who are you? Someone who has been here far too long. I don't understand. It does not matter. We will meet again soon. Continue your sleep. You will forget me when you wake up. Your time will come soon. I just pray that you are ready. Well, look who's up. Ugh. Enjoyed the free booze a little too much, huh? Blech. Clear the cobwebs, kid. We've got work to do. Yeah, I know. I know that area. That's Astro Place. You coming? All right, I'm coming. Come in. Hi, Monique? Oh, hello. You're Nishanti's friend, aren't you? The writer? Yeah, that's me. I almost didn't recognize you standing upright. Huh, <laughs> right. I don't usually drink that much. Well, we all make mistakes. So, what do you do here at CubeStar? I'm the executive producer. In a nutshell, I make sure everything gets done, on time, and under budget. She whips everyone into shape, huh? I like her. I saw a cat on the window ledge outside. Oh, her? The company adopted her. She belonged to Frank. So, you have a ghost story, is that right? Oh, yes. It's really nothing. Kind of embarrassing, really. Nishanti said it had to do with Frank Lyons. Yes, it was all over the news. You know what happened. I know he died, but that's all I know. Yes, he's dead. I saw him die. He died while filming his last scene. It was tragic and all, but in the end we had to finish the movie. We found a lookalike to complete the scene and then released it. That should have been the end of it. But the film was a smash hit. Really? It was that good? No, it wasn't. People only turned up because a man's death was attached to it. For years we tried to create a moneymaker. And this is how we did it. 
Be careful what you wish for, Rosangela. That's all I'll say. So what happened next? Next? I hear him. You hear him? Over in Central Park, near the Gothic Bridge. It's where he died. I pass the area every morning when I go jogging. I can swear I hear him calling me. Really? It's like he's... Well, it's probably just my own guilty conscience. We profited from his death. There's no denying that. But what could we do? Give the money to charity? We have investors to pay back. Anyway, that's my ghost story. Take it or leave it. I say we take it. We haven't been to the park in a while. Thanks for the chat, Monique. Sure. Last shoot of the film, then we're done. Hello? Oh, hey. You with the company? Company? Oh, I guess you're not. They told me to meet him out here. I guess they're late. Are you Frank Lyons? You recognize me? Sure. That's... Thank you. That means a lot. Hey, I live to please. Sort of. So, Frank, what are you doing here? Oh, you know, just waiting to finish up. Just one scene to go and I'm done. Finally. Done is the word, yeah. Hmm? Never mind. So, we're on a movie set? Yep. The film is called Water Under the Bridge. Really? Yeah. Actually, I'm probably not supposed to tell you that, but we're hardly Paramount Pictures or anything. Just don't tell anyone, okay? Oh, lips are sealed. Are you sure this is a movie set? Yeah. Where are all the lights, equipment, cameras? You know, I'm not sure. They should be on their way. I don't know what's keeping them. Could you tell me the last thing you remember? What do you mean? I've just been hanging out here. And before that? I was... hmm... Funny thing. Yes? The Minetta. The Minetta? Yeah, I was there. I'm always there. Listen, Frank, you seem like a swell guy, but I have to be honest. You're dead. What? I mean it. You've been haunting this area for months now. Ha. Very funny. My career might have one foot in the grave, but it's not dead yet. My ship will come in. You'll see. What can you tell me about Monique? Miss Stallman? She's a good lady. I just wonder where she is. You expecting her? Yeah. We can't start without the executive producer, can we? I could swear I saw her run by a couple of times, but why wouldn't she stop? So, tell me about yourself, Frank. Oh, I'm just an actor. I just walk and talk the way they want me to. Oh, come on. There's got to be more to you than that. I don't really need anything else. I'm not in the magazines, but I think I'm okay with that. I just want to finish what I start. Just what is the Minetta? Minetta? Yeah, what is it? The Minetta. I'm famous there, you know. You can always find a willing ear there, and some donations for the fund. The fund? What fund? Yes, they are very kind. Why are you talking like that? Talking like what? Like you... oh, never mind. Well, see you around. Sure, bye. Let's go. Yeah, sure. Hi. Afternoon. 
What can I get for you? Oh no, I'm not here to drink. Not yet, anyway. I was hoping you could answer some questions for me. Really? Yeah, is that a problem? No, it's just that this never happened to me before. You always see bartenders being questioned in the movies, but it never actually happens. You a detective? Something like that. Cool, how can I help? Have you ever been to the park gallery? No, sorry. Does a Monique Stallman ever come in here? Never heard of her, sorry. I was wondering if you've seen Frank Lyons. Frank Lyons, the actor? Didn't he die a few months ago? Yeah, he did. I think he might have come here before he died. Hmm, well, we get all sorts in here, but I don't think we've ever seen him. What can you tell me about this place? The Mineta? Been here forever. 60 or 70 years at least. I've only been here a few weeks myself, so I don't know much of the history. Is that right? No, wait, I know this. Hello, Frank. Oh, hey. Funny thing, I went to the Mineta. They never heard of you. Why would they? You said you went there all the time. I've never heard of the place. You told me you were famous there. Famous? Yeah, famous at the Mineta. The Mineta? I go there all the time. It's like my second home. But you just said... Say, could you spare some money for the Joe Gould Fund? Joe Gould Fund? What's that? What's what? The Joe Gould Fund. I have no idea. But you just... Oh, never mind. Could you tell me what the Joe Gould Fund is? Why, you want to donate a couple of dollars? I would, if you could tell me what it was for. For the upkeep and maintenance of Joe Gould's everywhere, of course. Any Joe Gould in particular? Who's Joe Gould? You know what? Never mind. I'm getting a headache talking to you. Well, see you around. Sure. Bye. Last shoot of the film, then we're done. Hi there. Got time for some more questions? Sure, ask away. Have you ever heard of Joe Gould, or anything called the Joe Gould Fund? <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Sometimes I think they should just rename this place the Joe Gould Bar and be done with it. Really? People hear about him and they come in here to ask about him. That's his portrait up there behind you. He died a long time ago. Who was he? He was some homeless guy who wandered the West Village in the 50s and 60s. He told some crazy stories and people found him entertaining, so they gave him money for his food and his beer. He referred to the money as the Joe Gould Fund. He also tried to write a book or something. He never finished it? Nope. Hey, sounds like your soulmate. It's a portrait of Joe Gould. Come in. Oh, hello. Again? Oh, Ilsa. You're back. Make yourself at home. You always do. Cute cat. Thanks, but she's not mine. She was Frank's. And just between you and me, she's not very friendly. Cute cat. Thanks, but she's not mine. She was Frank's. And just between you and me, she's not very friendly. Tell me about Frank. Frank? He was a solid actor. Not A-list material, but dependable. He could read his lines and hit his marks and look good on camera. He didn't demand much, and he was easy to work with. We set him up with an apartment nearby. That was all he needed. That reminds me we still haven't moved his stuff out. I'll have to get on that. Have you ever heard of a place called the Mineta? Sorry, no. Have you ever heard of Joe Gould or the Joe Gould Fund? Sorry, no. You really rented him an apartment. That's very generous. Not really. The company owns it and it's rent control. We couldn't pay him much, so it was the least we could do. 
Can you give me the address? Of Frank's old apartment? Why? I just wanted to look around. I ask again. Why? Research. You're very dedicated, but I'm afraid the answer is no. I'd like to give Frank some bit of dignity. Thanks for the chat, Monique. Sure. Hey, little fella. All right, Elsa. Let's see what's on your ID tag. 12th Street and Avenue A. Hopefully that's where we need to be. Once again, it's up to the dead guy to sort things out. Be my guest. Looks like a film script. You sure this guy was in pictures? He didn't even have a hot tub. Was he supposed to? If I was in pictures, I'd have a hot tub. Well, naturally. Although, I did find something interesting. What? There was a piece of paper just lying on a table. Do you remember what was on it? Of Course I do. Sounds like a film script. Probably the last thing he worked on before he died. You ever hear these lines in a flick before? No. I haven't gone to the movie since, well, you. Eh, makes no difference. It's probably not important. What do you mean? No. What do you mean? What do you mean? No. What do you mean? Hello, Frank. Oh, hey. Well, see you around. Sure. Bye. Last shoot of the film, then we're done. Um, hi there. I knew you'd come. How did you know I'd come? I know you, Vaughn. Perhaps too well. Listen, I have to tell you something. Come on. The boat's going to leave any minute. I'm not going. Not going? What do you mean you're not going? I said I'm not going. You're staying? Yes, I'm staying here with, um, Tom. Tom? Tom? What's that idiot have that I don't? He's, uh, he's a good man, Zack, and he needs me. And what about me? You don't need me, Zack. You never did. Huh? That's not in the script. Wait, Wait let's, let's talk, talk about this. Just forget me. Be free. Yvonne. Wait. Yvonne. Yvonne. Yvonne? All right. Finished. Finally. Hey, Monique, when's the rap party again? Monique? Where is she? Where is everybody? Hey, come on, guys. This is weird. Where did everybody go? This isn't funny. Frank? Oh, Rebecca, thank God. We just finished the scene, right? So where did everybody go? I'm not Rebecca, Frank. What? Of course you are. Only Rebecca could have finished the scene. Something's not right. Something is not right. I was here, filming the scene. Something happened. Here it comes. Oh, I'm dead, aren't I? Yeah. I'm a ghost and I'm haunting my last film shoot. That's so... cliché. I'm sorry, Frank. I really am. 
So what now? Just relax and take a hold of this. Okay, do it. Ow! I gotta work on my landings. It's so bright. It should hurt my eyes, but it doesn't. I don't think it's real light. I'm not sure what it is. It's beautiful. Just head towards it, Frank. That's all you need to do. You know, my very first acting role was a ghost. I was eight years old. We put on a Halloween play in the third grade. I played Scary Ghost Number 3. Funny the things you remember. It wasn't a bad life, was it? I might not have made it big, but I made it somewhere. How many can say the same, huh? Not many. No, not many. I've had a pretty good run. If it's my time to go, then it's my time. I just wish I knew who choked me to death. Yeah. Wait, what? You weren't choked, you had a heart attack. No, I was choked. I remember it distinctly. The news reports all said it was a heart attack. No disrespect, but I think I know how I died. The large hands around my neck? You don't forget a thing like that. Why would the press lie about how you died? I don't know. You'd think that they'd love a story about a murder. Funny, it doesn't even bother me. I think I'm ready to go. Wait, hold on a second. No can do. I gotta fly. See you around, and thanks. Just a few questions. Damn it. Huh? Uh... Hey, what the... I'm warning you. You? No, it can't be. I can still help you. No, oh, you're dead, aren't you? So many dead. So many blight upon the earth. Tell me something I don't know. Did you kill Frank? I helped him. I get no thanks. You want me to thank you? How about you buzz off? I can help you. You are still in pain. So much pain. No way. Not again. This ends now. Why do you resist? Resist? I'll show you resist. I see you. I know you. You don't know Jack, lady. Get off me! Joey? Clear off, kid. Get back. It's her. After all this time. Hey. You stay away from her, you hear me? I... I'm sorry. Joey, who was that? <sighs> Trouble. Well? Well what? Who is she? Her. She's nobody's sweetheart. Just some spook. She attacked you, Joey. Why did she do that? I have no idea. You think I've got all the answers? Well, you're wrong. I'm just in the dark as you are. You're lying. You recognized her, and she knew you. Tell me, Joey, please. <sighs> yeah, I know her. She calls herself the Countess. She's from an old case, back when I was with your aunt. She was alive then, and just as crazy. Tell me. Look, it's late. You want to be up all night, or you want the short version? Tell me everything. We thought she was a raving loony at first. We'd see her on the street, ranting like a crazy woman. We were investigating these two ghosts. Both had been killed by an old woman. Didn't take much deduction to put two and two together. So she was killing people? Not exactly. She thought she was freeing people. You see, she was a medium. A medium? Like me? Like Auntie? Yeah, only she didn't have a spirit guide. There was this reporter, Joseph Mitchell. Somehow they formed a bond. He didn't know it, but whoever he wrote about, she would go and kill. She was freeing their spirits, which is what you mediums do best. But they were still alive. She didn't seem to realize that. In the end, she tried to free your Aunt Lauren. So, we stopped her. You stopped her? How? We just did. So what now? Her spirit is seeking revenge? I don't think so. Why now? Why all this time? Besides, I saw her die. There was no ghost. So she's not a ghost? I don't know what she is. Let's talk about this in the morning. Right now I'm taking a hot shower and going to bed. Sure. 
Sure, I'll hold the fort. Uh. Poor deluded man, enthralled to a madness that even he could not explain. A madness called the Countess. I... I know you. We have spoken before, but it is not important. But hush, aren't you tired? You need to rest. Tired? Shh, just sleep. That's it, sleep. Tomorrow you will wake up energized and refreshed. You will not remember me, but don't worry. We will meet very shortly. Good morning. You're perky today. Sleep well? Yeah, I did. I've been thinking. Too much has happened for this to be mere coincidence. What do you mean? In the gallery? There was a painting. A painting of her. Really? I knew it looked familiar, but I didn't recognize it until now. What did it look like? Why don't we head over and you can take a look for yourself. You ready to go? Yeah, let's blow this popsicle stand. Hi again! Hi. You got home okay? I think Nish had to half carry you out of here. Was I that bad? Well, originally I thought I had bought too much wine. It turns out I didn't have to worry, so thanks! <laughs> uh, sure. No problem. Anyway, I have to go over some stuff. Feel free to look around. There. It's her. I knew it. Now look at that and tell me this isn't a coincidence. Stupid old hag. We'll find you. Just see if we don't. Definitely looks like the woman from the other night, but she looks sad. It's just a lighthouse. I wonder which one. Hi, Josie? Yes? Hi, Josie. Can I talk to you for a bit more? I'm kind of swamped, but okay. So, how's everything going? Oh, you know. Busy, busy. This is my first public opening. I want it to be just right. Tell me about Claude. Oh, I found him on the street. Literally. He made his living painting street scenes and selling them to tourists. But he's too much of a genius for that. Don't you think so? Oh yes, definitely. See? I knew he was the right choice for this gallery. How much do these paintings cost? Oh, I can't reveal the prices until the public exhibit. But if you're interested in any of them, let me know. I'll discount it for you. Oh, no thanks. I'm not really in the market for any art right now. Translation, she can't afford it. Oh, alright. But if you change your mind, let me know. I'd like to know more about that painting there. Oh, the Dark Lady. It's different than his other paintings. I'm worried the investors won't like it, but Claude insists. What do you want to know? What can you tell me about the Dark Lady? Well, it's different, isn't it? Claude's work is mostly abstract, but this is actually of a specific subject. Did Claude ever say why? No, but she's definitely striking. She strikes all right. I still got the scars. Claude gets weird when I ask who she is or why he put her in front of the Roosevelt Island Lighthouse. I figure it's just one of those eccentric artist things. The Roosevelt Island Lighthouse, huh? It's been a while since I've been over there. Where can I find Claude? Knowing him, he's probably preparing for tonight. Preparing? You know, glug glug. He's hitting the sauce. Ah. You mentioned something about investors. Oh yes, the Meltzer Foundation. They paid for everything, the renovation, the lights, everything. I've got to pay them back eventually, of course, but still.
How long have you been in business? Not long, just a few days now. This loft opened up and I just nabbed it. Real estate in this neighborhood is harder to get than you'd think. How well do you know Monique Stallman? She's a nice lady, although I don't think she'll be back. She didn't seem to really appreciate Claude's work. I'm sorry. No worries, it's not everybody's cup of tea. Do you know anything about Frank Lyon's death? Spooky, isn't it? Imagine someone just dying of a heart attack right in front of you. Poor Monique must have been traumatized. Yeah, traumatized all the way to the bank. Have you ever heard of a place called the Mineta? No, sorry. Have you ever heard of Joe Gould or the Joe Gould Fund? No, sorry. Can you tell me anything about the Meltzer Foundation? Oh, those guys are a godsend. Without them, I never would have been able to open this place. I presented them with my plan for the gallery, and poof, they wrote me a check. That's pretty generous. I never thought I was venture capital material, but go figure. I'll have to pay them back, of course, and give them a percentage of our income, but look around. It's my life's dream realized. Thanks, Josie. I'd better get going. Sure, Rosangela. I'll see you at the opening tonight. I'm ready if you are. Yeah, sure. Yes. Hi, is this the Meltzer Foundation? Yes. Oh, good. I was hoping to ask you a few questions. Paul, this one's for you. Hmm? Oh, sure thing. Come on over and step into my office. So, I'm Paul Meltzer, and my silent partner over there is my brother, Charlie. Rosangela Blackwell. A pleasure. So, what can we do for you? I was hoping to talk to you about what you do here. Really? Well, well, well. We're moving up in the world, Charlie. Uh-huh. So, Rosangela, you with a newspaper? I'm sort of freelance. Struggling, eh? Well, that's what the Melter Foundation is all about. Isn't that right, Charlie? Uh-huh. Well, ask away. I was wondering what you do here. You know, I wonder that myself. Hey, Charlie, what do we do here? We give away money, Paul. That's right. We're into private investments. We grant risk-free capital to struggling businesses. You really just give away money? <laughs> no, not exactly. It's about giving money away wisely. You heard the man. If you want the lowdown on what we do, just ask. Josie Park told me that you invested in her gallery. You know Josie. How's she doing? She's fine, I guess. We're both rooting for her, right, Charlie? Sure. Are you familiar with Monique Stallman or Cube Star Films? Why do you ask? No reason. Do you know anything about Frank Lyons, the actor? Of course. Can you believe it? A heart attack at his age. He looked healthy. Of course, who knows what kind of drugs those actors take. Have you ever been to a bar called the Mineta? Mm, no, sorry. Have you ever heard of Joe Gould or the Joe Gould Fund? Mm, no, sorry. Tell me more about the foundation. Let's say you have a brilliant idea for a business, but you've made some mistakes in the past. You've got bad credit or were in debt for a long time. No reputable bank in the country would give you a loan. Or if they did, they'd charge you a fortune in interest. But not us. We believe in a second chance. 
We'll loan you the money to kickstart your business in return for a share of the profits. If your business takes off, wonderful, we both win. If not, we're the one who pays for it. Well, thanks for talking to me. I might be back later. Sure thing. Here, take my card. If you have any questions, just email. Oh, so you're on B-mail too. <laughs> Isn't everybody? God, did you see that chick walk? She waddles like a duck. Huh? Our reporter friend. She's kinda your type. What do you mean? Yeesh, Charlie. Come up for air. She walked right past your desk. I didn't see any duck. Never mind. Stay put, kid. I'm gonna snoop around. I've got no idea what this thing is. Hey, my internet just went down. Stupid wireless. It should come up again in a minute. Finally, the internet's back up. Hey, Charlie, what's that B-mail password again? Don't you remember anything? It's Tennis53. Just write it down. No way. Someone might find it. Hey, when are we going to get a real company email address? What's wrong with the one we've got? Oh, come on. B-mail? Who is going to take us seriously when we only got a B-mail account? It does the job. <sighs> At least we have a real internet connection. Although, I don't trust this wireless crap. Paul has a B-mail address just like me. You ready to go? It's about time. Let's scram. Claude? Rosangela Blackwell, the writer. Come on over. Have a drink. You remember me. Who could forget someone who could down three glasses of claret in half an hour? <laughs> bit early to be drinking. Says the woman who had to be carried home the other night by an old Indian lady. My opening is tonight, and I intend to be well and truly plastered. It's the only way I'll be able to bear it. I'd like to talk to you about your work. I'd love to, but I'm not drunk enough. I really like that painting of yours, the dark lady. <laughs> My paintings aren't meant to be liked. They are meant to be understood. But nobody does. 
I feel like Joe Gould sometimes. I'd really like to know more about the Dark Lady. I have a rule. I don't talk about my work unless I'm drunk enough. How drunk is that? I'm not sure, but I'm working on it. What do you think of the park gallery? It's all right, I guess. I don't know what Josie sees in my stuff. She doesn't understand it at all. She likes it enough to risk her money on it. Liking it isn't the same as understanding it. Still, Josie's been good to me. How could I say no? Do you know Monique Stallman? She was at the gallery the other night, yeah? Uh-huh. She told me my work was awful. I liked her. She insulted your work, but you liked her. Sure. She was honest. She didn't pretend to be awed by it like all the other phonies do. Do you know anything about Frank Lyons, the actor? He died a few months ago, didn't he? Yeah. Never saw his work. Don't go to the movies much. You come here often? Enough. It's old-fashioned, you know. You know about Joe Gould? Sure I do. He was one of the city's last geniuses. Or maybe he was just nuts, I don't know. Maybe I'm just nuts too. Either way, he's famous now, thanks to Joseph Mitchell. Did he just say Joseph Mitchell? Can you tell me anything about the Meltzer Foundation? Those are the guys who are funding Josie's gallery? Yeah. You'd have to talk to Josie about them. I just throw colors at a canvas. Could you tell me more about Joseph Mitchell? Another of the city's great geniuses. Gone. He could talk to you for five minutes and then write a biography that made you seem like the most fascinating person alive. They wouldn't be alive for long. But then he stopped writing. Nobody knows why, at least not for sure. He published a book about Joe Gould, and then poof, no more writing. He went to his office at the New Yorker every day for 30 years, but never wrote a single word. Bye, Claude. Yeah. Oh, man, look at the time. I guess I gotta go face the art public. See you at the gallery later, or not. Claude? Hey, you came! You're drunk. Very much so. We need to talk about the Countess. Who? The Dark Lady. I don't talk about her. So you do know her. Don't try to understand my work. I haven't met a single person who really understands art. Not one. Who says I don't understand art? Hmm. <laughs> you understand my work? All right. Tell me what you think of this painting behind me. The hard lines in this painting are really provocative. You think so, huh? Oh, yes. The hard lines against a soft world. Really? Excuse me. So, Claude... What do you think of this painting here? Does this painting represent darkness and shadow? It could. Is that what it feels like to you? Sure. Then it does. Excuse me. Claude, we really need to talk about... What do you think of this painting here? Why is one side so colorful and the other so dark? Well, look at it. The darkness is eating away the color, overwhelming it. That's a bit bleak. It's a bleak world. Can I be forward? Forward? It's been a great pleasure talking to you. Really? Yes. Very refreshing. You seem to have a greater understanding of art than most of the rabble here. I do? Listen, Rosangela, was it? Oh, call me Rosa. Rosa. I'm suffocating in here. I need a breath of fresh air. Come meet me out on the fire escape. We can talk more in private. Hey, way to go! Claude, where are you going? Just some fresh air, Joes. I'll be back. No worries. We need to talk about the Countess. Yes. She's so sad and angry. I wonder why. Why is she sad? She's looking for something she lost. Yeah, 
her mind. It consumes her every thought. Why is she so angry? I don't know. I wish I did. I think she's being forced against her will. Being turned into something she shouldn't be. Like what? I don't know. How do you know her? I see her in my dreams. She's looking for me. She hasn't found me yet, but I'm hoping my painting will help. You want her to find you? Yes. She's trapped and looking to escape. She needs me to help her. She's chosen me. Oh, I get it. He's the chosen one. Why don't we ever meet anyone sane? Why did she choose you? Because of my work. She's dead, I think. But she will live through my work. Artists. Nuts. All of them. Claude, the Countess is dangerous. Dangerous? No. She's lost and angry, but not dangerous. I've met her. She's killed many times. You? Why would she seek you? You're not an artist. No, but I've still seen her. She's powerful. Power you don't want to mess with. I just want to help her. Hey, pal, helping ghosts is our turf. Just be careful, okay? Careful? Just who are you? How do you know so much about my dreams? I'm... well, I know things. Know things? Like what? That you're messing with stuff you don't understand. And you do? Well, I'm working on it. <sighs> All right. Teach me. I need to know. Don't look at me, kid. Look, there's something about me. I shouldn't tell you, but you're in danger. What is it? Look out! No! No! No, you didn't! Claude! Suicide. Well, what else would they think? He was drunk and erratic and known to be temperamental. Just be thankful they didn't accuse you of killing him. Yeah, lucky. She killed him, Joey. Right in front of me. Us, kid. Us. I was there too. He was opening up to me. I could have warned him. I, I could have helped him. It happened too fast. There wasn't anything either of us could do. It's not right. Newsflash, kid. The world's a rotten place. It doesn't have to be. We have to stop her, Joey. She can't kill anybody else. Look, darling, your aunt met that witch and barely survived. And no offense, doll, she had a stiffer spine than you. Maybe. But she didn't finish the job, did she? Not exactly, no. Then I have to finish what she started. Good night, Joey. I'm proud of you, Rosangela. You are proving to be much stronger than your guide suspects. He thinks I'm stupid. Be wary of him. Follow your heart. Who are you? Shh. Sleep. Tomorrow you have a challenge to meet, and you must be fresh. You won't remember me, but we will meet soon. Good morning. Hmm, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Hold your horses, will ya? I'm coming. Hi, Josie. Rosangela, gosh, what a horrible night. Are you okay? I'm fine. Poor Claude, I had no idea what the show was doing to him. What do you mean? Well, he killed himself, didn't he? Oh, he grumbled a lot, but I thought deep down he liked the attention. Still, at least his work shall live on. You're keeping the gallery open? Of course. Everything here is completely sold out. Really? That painting behind you? Yesterday, I couldn't give it away. Today I'm being offered 5000 for it. That's horrible. That's business, I'm afraid. I feel bad for Claude, but... Well, I have debts. I have investors to pay back. Lucky for you, he died. That's not fair. I've known Claude for years. I liked him a lot. 
He never felt his work would be seen by anybody, and now people believe his work has value. That's something, isn't it? If you think so. What will you do with the money? Well, a percentage of it will go to my investors. As for the rest, I don't know. I could sponsor another artist like Claude, or I could give it to charity. I need to think about it. Can I ask you some more questions? I don't think so, Rosangela. I'm meeting with the buyers today, and I have to get everything ready. Bye, Josie. Good luck with, well, everything. Sure. Bye. Come in. Oh, hello. Again? Have you ever heard of a reporter named Joseph Mitchell? Sorry, no. What do you know about the Meltzer Foundation? Why, are you looking for a loan? <laughs> Maybe. You deal with them? They invested in our last film. Water Under the Bridge? That's the one. I assume they got their money back since the film was such a success. Not that it's any of your business, but yes, they did. Thanks for the chat, Monique. Sure. Hi. Mm-hmm. Rotten day to be out, huh? I've seen worse. What brings you out here? None of your business. Pretty cool lighthouse, huh? If you say so. Nice mug. Uh-huh. What's written on it? Mind your own business. Could I ask you a couple of questions? And who are you, may I ask? Rosangela Blackwell. Nice to meet you. Why do you want to talk to me? I'm curious about the lighthouse. What makes you think I know anything? I'm wondering if anything unusual happened here. Unusual like what? Just anything unusual. I've got nothing to say to you. Well, see you around. Uh-huh. The mug has a company logo on it. It says Gold Tech? No idea what that is. Let's go. All right, I'm coming. Hi. Mm-hmm. Are you Marty Goldwater? Yeah, who are you? Rosangela Blackwell. What do you want? Your son. I heard what happened. You knew my boy? No, but I'm looking into it. You with the police? No, but I'm sort of... freelance. But you can't do any worse than those worthless cops have. So sure, be whatever you want. Have you ever been to the park gallery? No, I haven't. Do you know Monique Stallman? No. Do you know anything about Frank Lyons, the actor? The dead actor? Who isn't familiar with him these days? I saw the movie. Don't know what all the fuss was about. Have you ever been to a bar downtown called the Mineta? The Mineta? Is that place still around? Oh, I haven't been there for years. So you know it. I used to go there years ago. Have you ever heard of a man named Joe Gould? You mean Professor Seagull? You've heard of him. Sure I did. Back in the day, you'd always see him wandering the West Village. 
Must have been, oh, 50 years ago. I was a young man then. He called himself Professor Seagull. If you gave him a dollar, he'd recite poetry in Seagull language. For real? Who knows? It was a laugh. New York was full of people like that in those days. Times sure have changed. Have you ever heard of the Meltzer Foundation? No, I haven't. Have you ever heard of Joseph Mitchell? Didn't he used to write for the New Yorker? Yes. I think I've read some of his work, but it's so long ago I can't remember. How exactly was he killed? The newspaper didn't say. His neck was crushed. They said he was choked. But there were no bruises on his neck. I never heard of anything like it. Crushed? Yeah. Do you have any theories of your own? Of course I do. It was his rival company that did it. Lazarus Technology. They did it, but I can't prove it. Why do you think this other company is involved? Look, my boy was a genius. He ran a medical technology firm not far from here as one of their chief researchers. He was making a device that can improve the efficiency of pacemakers. A real breakthrough, he said. But this other firm, Lazarus, was working on the same thing. It was a real race to see who'd finish it first. He didn't eat, he hardly slept, he poured his life into his work. Then one night he called me to say he had finished. He wanted to celebrate. That was the last time I talked to him. He was killed that night? Yes, and a few days later the device was registered by Lazarus. No justice, none at all. Well, see you around. Uh-huh. Here we go, Lazarus Technology. Thank you for calling Lazarus Technologies. Please choose from the following options. For general information about Lazarus Technologies, press 1. To inquire about our products, press 2. To speak to an operator, press 3. Lazarus Technologies is the world's leader in biomedical and biomechanical engineering. We supply research and development to hospitals and clinics throughout the world. Lazarus Technologies is supported by a generous grant from the Meltzer Foundation. If you would like to request a product catalogue, please speak to a customer representative. You have reached the general office mailbox. Please leave a message and someone will get back to you shortly. I'm ready if you are. Yeah, sure. Yes? Hi, me again. Go right in. I heard you were at the gallery last night. Yes. And, and you saw what happened? Yes. Wow. Just wow. What would possess a guy to do a thing like that, huh? I don't know. Well, enough doom and gloom. What can I help you with? It looks like the Park Gallery is going to be successful now. Yes, Josie certainly has had her work cut out for her. So do you. Her profits are your profits. Yes, there is that. And all it cost was one man's death. Now that's unfair. What do you expect us to do? Give back the money? We're a private foundation. Money has to come in in order for money to go out. Someone died. Doesn't that bother you? Sure, it bothers me. Death is a horrible thing. But I don't see what it has to do with us. Have you ever heard of a reporter named Joseph Mitchell? Hmm, that name sounds familiar. He was a reporter for the New Yorker magazine. Hey, that's it. Charlie used to work there. Hey, Charlie, did you know Joseph Mitchell? Everyone knew him, Paul. He was a living legend. A living legend? How about that? Have you ever heard of a guy named John Goldwater? Mm, no, sorry. 
I heard that your foundation gave money to Lazarus Technologies. Oh yes, that was one of our first success stories. I heard that your foundation gave money to Lazarus Technologies. Oh yes, that was one of our first success stories. I learned something interesting about Lazarus Technologies. It rose to success on the shoulders of a murdered man. That's a strong thing to say. It's true. His company was an inch away from beating Lazarus, but then he was killed. Even if this is true. It is true. You can look it up. Even still, I don't see how this is our fault. Two men dead? That doesn't sound fishy to you. Should it? What kind of men do you take us for? I have sympathy for that artist, but he was obviously unstable. And as for this John Goldwater person, I have never heard of him. You'll need more evidence than that if you want to convince me of anything. Two people have died. Yes, so you said. That doesn't bother you. Neither of those men have anything to do with us. If you're looking for a conspiracy, you're looking in the wrong place. Why weren't you at the opening last night? Oh, we would just be in the way, you know? Art's not really our thing. But Josie knows what she's doing. Do you know anything about Frank Lyons, the actor? Of course. Can you believe it? A heart attack at his age. He looked healthy. Of course, who knows what kind of drugs those actors take. Have you ever heard of a guy named John Goldwater? Mm, no, sorry. Have you ever heard of a reporter named Joseph Mitchell? Hmm. He was a reporter for the New Yorker magazine. Hey, that's it. Charlie used to work there. Hey, Charlie, did you know Joseph Mitchell? Everyone knew him, Paul. He was a living legend. A living legend? How about that? Your foundation is pretty generous. Well, we don't give money to just anybody. Charlie over there is in charge of separating the wheat from the chaff. When someone comes to us with their handout, Charlie does his research and makes sure that they are worth the risk. You wouldn't believe some of the bums we get in here. Monique told me that you invested in Cube Star Films. Monique, oh, oh yes, the, she's the executive producer, isn't she? Yes. She's doing a great job. That place is earning money hand over fist. Cubestar Films became successful after Frank Lyons died. Did they? I suppose they did. That benefits you too, doesn't it? Oh, I see where this is going. Let me break it down for you, Paul. Frank Lyons dies, and Cubestar Films becomes successful overnight. Claude Erden commits suicide, and now the Park Gallery is selling priceless works of art. John Goldwater dies, and Lazarus Technologies becomes rich and powerful. All these companies are represented by you. Don't you see how this looks? This is a total coincidence. I'm sure of it. Is it? It is. And I'll tell you another thing. I don't like these accusations. I think you should leave. I am going to get to the bottom of this. Maybe you will, but it has nothing to do with us. Now go, before I call the police. Come on, let's blow and let him stew for a while. Yeesh. She's crazy. Crazy with teeth. You gotta watch out for women like that, Scooter. Scooter? You haven't called me that since we were kids. Really? Maybe I should start calling you that again. Whatever. Stay put, kid. I'm gonna snoop around. He seems pretty hard at work. Hey, Scooter, do you have last week's earnings reports? I gave them to you an hour ago. You did? Ah, right. Thanks, Scooter. Charles doesn't get a lot of emails, it seems. There's just a bunch of names in his inbox. Frank Lyons, John Goldwater, Claude Erden. 
Joey, look at this. It's like a hit list of everyone who was killed by the Countess. So Charlie was writing about each of the victims. I knew there was something fishy about that place. Come on, let's go back there and talk to him. What on earth do we say? Think of something, kid. History is repeating itself, and I don't... What was that? It looks like his inbox is being updated. My name. That's my name. That son of a... Mess with us, Willie. He just marked me. I'm next. Look, don't worry. She might not come right away. We have time to plan. You. You killed Claude. And the others. I did not kill. I healed them. Can it. We've heard this song before. Just back away, real slow-like. I only want to help. I think we've had about enough of your help, lady. Back off, kid. I'm ready this time. I have to help her. Just let me help her. Oh, yeah? Help yourself to this. Where is she? She isn't far. I can sense her. You think I'm telling you? Where? Well, I know for sure she's not through that door behind you. No place to go. I can't run away unless Joey comes with me, and Joey's the only thing holding her back. Come on, Rosa. Auntie did it 30 years ago, so can you. I wish you were here, Auntie. I really do. That's far enough, sister. Joey, leave it. Leave it? Like hell. Hey, look at this. Ooh, that... I wanted to help her. And look where it got you. You think anyone appreciates your help? No. No! How... How did we end up here? I have brought you here. You are safe now. I have saved you. Saved me? What do you mean, saved me? What did you do? Joey, did she kill me? Am I dead? I... I don't know. Lady, I suggest you start talking. There is nothing to say. You are safe now, both of you. My dear, you carry on so. You. It's you. I've been looking for you for so long. Why did you leave me? My poor host, you cast me out. You broke our bond. It's too late to repair it. What? No! Why would I do that? Your mind is so broken that you do not remember. My, my, you are a mess. You don't even know your own name, Countess, indeed. Regardless, it is time for this to end. End? Is there an end? For you, there can be, if you let me. I trust you, Madeline. I always will trust you. Rose Angela Blackwell, Joseph Malone, it is a pleasure to finally meet you. I'm sorry it had to be under such unpleasant circumstances. Unpleasant is right. Who are you? My name is Madeline, and a long time ago, I was this poor soul's spirit guide. She corrupted our bond, and I'm afraid the damage to both of us was quite severe. Can you help us? Can you help us end this cycle of death? Who are you? As I said, my name is Madeline, and a long time ago, I was a spirit guide to the woman you know as the Countess. We were bonded, much like you and your guide are, but much has changed, and time is short. Will you help us? I know you. I have been trying to reach you in your dreams. At long last, I am able to manifest myself here, but time is short. Will you help us? 
We've got some questions first. Yes, I'm sure you do. But time is short. Will you help us? Yes, I'll help you. I don't have much choice. She's killed me. Killed you? No. She left you quite unharmed. But regardless, there is no time to waste. Come with me. Now just relax. Hey, what's the big idea? All right, you. Talk. Where are they? The pattern. They're going to fix the pattern. Talk sense, will ya? The source. Cut off the source and the pattern will revert. Why do I bother? Great. Trapped on another plane of existence with the Countess of Crazyville. They better know what they're doing. Hey, what happened? How did you do that? This is where the link originates. Link? The bond between your Countess and her hosts. Part of her is trapped here. You must remove it. Madeline, could I talk to you? Of course. Where are we? You have been to this plane before. You have brought many lost spirits through here. Well, yes, but there was never a diner before. I can understand your confusion, but it is not a real diner. It is metaphorical. As you know, there is a bond between the Countess and her current host, and the bond is represented by this diner. You will find out more inside. Why is it represented by a diner? The Countess used to spend lots of time in diners like these. You will find out more inside. This bond, how do I break it? Part of the Countess is trapped inside. You must find it and remove it. This bond, how do I break it? Part of the Countess is trapped inside. You must find it and remove it. How did the Countess break the bond between you? She did not break the bond, but moved it. To be rid of me, she had to form a bond with someone living. Someone who could, in essence, become her guide. How she acquired this knowledge, I do not know. I only know that it was accomplished. Who did she pass it to? Joe Gould. It was an easy task, since his mind was already broken. Upon Gould's death, it was passed on to Joseph Mitchell. And now Charlie Meltzer. Yes, it must be broken if this is to end. How did the Countess get so... Insane? Yes. Like you, her mind is a door to another plane of existence. By corrupting our bond, she opened that door so wide that it flooded her mind with unfathomable knowledge. She essentially has the universe inside her head, and no human mind can contain that. It broke her. She sees everything but understands nothing. If she didn't banish me to this place between worlds, I might feel more pity. Did you know her when she was alive? Of course. We spent almost 30 years together. What was she like? Different. Happier. She loved helping those in need. But it no longer matters. She is the one who needs help now. Thanks, Madeline. I'm going to see what I can do. I will be waiting right here. For the upteenth time, I have no money for your fund. Show some pity. At least lend us a cigarette. Ahem. I believe we got company. Ah. Miss, could you perhaps spare a few dollars for the Joe Gould Fund? <sighs> Hello. You're Joseph Mitchell, aren't you? I believe you have the better of me, Miss. Blackwell. Rosangela Blackwell. Blackwell, huh? I might have known. You met my auntie. Your auntie, yes. I do see a slight resemblance. I did warn her to leave well enough alone, but she was determined. Let's hope that you can do some good here. What are you doing here? We are echoes. Leftovers, if you will. We were linked to the Countess when we were alive. When we died, part of ourselves got trapped here. So you're not a ghost? Not fully. I'm not sure what I am. I remember living, I remember dying, but I don't feel like Joseph Mitchell. All I know is that when I thought of death, an eternity with Joe Gould was the last thing on my mind. What is your connection to the Countess? I don't know. I never met the woman. Joe Gould was the one who knew her. He had a special bond with her, apparently. But somehow, he passed it on to me when he died. Next thing I knew, I was murdering people by writing about them. There was no choice. I had to stop writing. 
I studied some of your work in journalism school. Now that's just foolish. I was a relic even before I died. The city I wrote about has long since evolved and changed into something completely different. But that's New York City, isn't it? Wouldn't be New York if it stayed the same year to year. I'm sorry you had to stop writing. So am I. But what else could I do? Let innocent people die? No, I don't regret the choice I made. Not for one moment. Did you know Charles Meltzer? Yes, I did. He worked at the New Yorker back in the late 70s. He would come into my office and ask about the old days, and I was happy to tell him. I knew he would never cut it as a reporter, but he had a very keen analytical mind. I almost forgot all about him, but it appeared a link formed between us nonetheless. When I died, my connection to the Countess passed on to him. Charles Meltzer is using the Countess to kill people. By accident? No, on purpose. He sent her after me. Now, that's a shame. I'm aware that through my actions I killed a few people, but I could forgive myself for it since I was unaware of what I was doing. But many times I thought to myself, I have a weapon. It's untraceable. Nobody knows about it. I could use it, but I did not. I was tempted, but I did not. Not once. You have to stop Charles. Break this link. Destroy this place. No more innocents should have to die. How do I break this link? I wish I knew. I'm afraid all this is a bit beyond me. Why did you write about Joe Gould? He's a fascinating man. Intolerable company, but fascinating. He exemplified everything about New York at the time. Its artistic expression, its frustration, its joy and heartbreak. His oral history, or the idea of it, energized the work of dozens of writers and intellectuals. But the more I got to know him, the less I wanted to be around him. Did you ever read Joe Gould's oral history? That, it never existed. Or oh, if it did, Mr. Gould never shared it with anyone, which amounts to the same thing. You know why I never wrote it down. People would have died. You didn't stop telling people you were writing it, did you? What could I say? The truth? They would have chucked me in a loony bin. Thanks for talking, Mr. Mitchell. I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Miss Blackwell. Hello. Hello. My name is Joseph Ferdinand Gould. I am graduate of Harvard Magna Cum Difficultate and chairman of the board of Wheel and Woe Incorporated. In exchange for a drink, I'll recite a poem, deliver a lecture, argue a point, or take off my shoes and imitate a seagull. I prefer gin, but beer will do. I've been hearing a lot about you lately. My reputation precedes me. I saw your portrait in the Mineta. The Mineta, yes. I'm quite famous there, you know. I gathered. It's all thanks to Mitchell, of course. The Joe Gould Fund filled its coffers nicely when he wrote his article. What are you doing here? I don't quite know myself. We've all got to be someplace. As I understand it, I was mentally linked to my old friend, the Countess. I wish I'd known. It explains everything that my work was trying to prove. Your work? I have had many callings. I studied the seagulls of the world and learned their language. I spent months measuring the heads of 1,000 Chippewa Indians. But before I died, I was putting to paper the most important literary work known to man, the oral history of our time. With a compilation of the conversations of the city, overheard in bars, subways, street corners, and diners, put together and studied properly, it would have revolutionized everything. How would it have revolutionized everything? We were all connected, every single one of us. But how? Think of the ramifications if we found out. It sounds like quite an undertaking. It was my life's work. How did you know the Countess? We met in a diner like this one. We'd often spend a week or two walking along the docks to discuss seagulls. She had many interesting theories on seagull linguistics. Then, one day, she disappeared but a link had already formed between us. It's everything my oral history was trying to prove, that we are all linked. The Countess is killing people. Murder? No. No, I refuse to believe that. She couldn't turn a fly. Why is she called the Countess? That's what she chooses to call herself. Far be it for me to tell her otherwise. The name doesn't seem strange to you? When you lived a life like mine, you take people at face value. Who cares about names? I once knew another fellow without a name, called himself The Deacon. The Deacon? 
You knew the deacon. Oh yes, he was this gloomy career drunk. One summer night while sitting in a doorway of the Bowery, he caught the scent of sulfur. He looked up and saw the devil himself standing over him. Since that night he believed he lost his soul. Not the most charitable drinking companion, if I may say so. No, no, he wouldn't be. You knew him? Sort of. Fancy that. What's your connection to Joseph Mitchell? Ah, Mitchell, my benefactor. He made me quite famous, you know. But my goodwill only extends so far. Why's that? A cigarette. He has them. He won't give me one. It's demeaning to have to beg for one weekly cigarette. You want a cigarette? Yes, I want a cigarette. It's a disgrace that I should have to beg for one. I'd like to read the oral history. And I'd like you to, but I'm afraid it belongs to the ages now. There was also the problem of it never existing in the first place. Of course it existed, only not on paper. It was over three million words, three times the size of the Holy Bible. The work transcended mere parchment and ink. What about those essays you published in the dial? A passing fancy, nothing more. You wrote essays? For the now defunct Dial magazine. I still have the originals. Do you want to see? I'd like to see that essay. Here you go. It appears to be an essay about insanity, but the handwriting is so awful I can barely make it out. Just as well. I don't have time to read all this stuff. I don't think he'll miss this. This handwriting makes my eyes water, but I think it's an essay about insanity. I don't think it's important. Here you go. Always glad to share. Locked. Easy. What's that noise? That's weird. There's a strange glow coming from inside. Hello? Is someone in there? She comes, she comes. Who are you? Part of a hole. Left behind. Save here. Leave me. Are you the Countess? Countess, one of my names. Yes. I no longer live, but part of me remains. Leave me. I need to take you out of here. No. Save here. Warm air. I stay in warm places. Too cold out there. My hand goes right through it. No. Too cold. I will survive here and save fire. Leave me. Well, um, see ya. I'm talking to an oven. A sound idea. I'm sure it made more sense than most people I know. So this is the kitchen. Such a bare and emotionless place. Not even a bottle of ketchup. Mr. Gould. He returns. Say, can you spare a few dollars for the Joe Gould Fund? I'm afraid I'm a little short. Fair enough, fair enough. Does something about that oven look strange to you? Nothing about my life has ever made sense. Why should an oven be any different? I'll talk to you later. Sure, sure, sure. Things to do, people to see, I understand. Mr. Mitchell? Yes? Why don't you give him a cigarette? When you give that man a cigarette or a drink, he likes to talk. And the only subject Joe Gould likes to talk about, at length, is Joe Gould, and the only person for him to talk to is me. So, I do not give him a cigarette. Gould has left the room. I see. Thank you for that. Have you reconsidered giving him a cigarette? I suppose I have been a little hard on the man. Here, I don't smoke anymore anyway. Give him the whole pack. The oven in the kitchen is talking. Is it now? This doesn't surprise you. Miss, look where we are. I stopped being surprised ages ago. Thanks for talking, Mr. Mitchell. I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Miss Blackwell.
Joseph Mitchell wanted you to have this. Ah, nice contribution to the Joe Gould Fund. Mr. Gould? She returns. Say, can you spare a few dollars for the Joe Gould Fund? I'm afraid I'm a little short. Fair enough, fair enough. Liking your cigarette? It's delightful. Here, feel free to join me. Uh, thanks, but I don't smoke. You might as well keep it. When a man is rich, he can afford to be generous. I'll talk to you later. Sure, sure, sure. Things to do, people to see, I understand. Is this warm enough? Warm. Safety. The flame will carry me. Thank you. That sounds ominous. For a ghost door, it was pretty solid. I can't explain it, but I have the feeling that my time in this place is ending. I'm breaking the link. It'll all be over soon. Over, yes. I can't say that I ever understood any of this, but I do know one thing. Gould was right. We are connected. Every single person on the planet. It's a pattern so complex that we can't even begin to understand it. So don't try to understand it. Gould tried, and he lived a miserable life. Just live, and be happy in living. Anyhow, you best get gone. You got a job to finish. This place is starting to fade. That's good, right? Once this place is gone, the link is gone too. The killing will stop. This means something to you, the killing. She killed someone right in front of me. I want to stop that from happening again. Imagine that, genuine heart. Your predecessor was not graced with such compassion. Predecessor? Do you mean Lauren? My Auntie Lauren? We should not stay here. This place will soon cease to be. Come. It's broken! The bond is broken! I'm free! Way to go, Red. My head. I understand everything. Everything? I hurt people. Yes, that was you. But look, whatever happened, it's done. You can't do anything about it now. It's time for you to move on. No, this should not have happened. He will not kill again. Hey! It's about time you got back here. What did you guys do? I did it, Joey. I broke the bond. Yeah, you broke it all right, and our friend just blew. She did not enter the white light? No. Oh, that is a problem. She has free will and is loose in the world. With the power she has, who knows what damage she can cause. Great, just great. I don't know who you are, lady, and I don't care. But just leave the spook work to us, okay? I have little choice in the matter. I am bound to this plane. What happens next is up to you. Wait! Let's get out of here. Whoa. Little dizzy. Careful, kid. You've never been under for that long. At least I'm alive. Yeah, everything's peachy. There's a killer ghost on the loose and it's our fault. But we broke the link. She doesn't have to kill anymore. You want to tell her that? Who would she want to kill anyway? I think she's going to kill Charlie Meltzer. Oh, him. The guy who wants me dead. Yeah, ironic as all get out. We'll sort it out later. Let's get going. Damn it. It's not working. All this ghost activity must have shorted out something. You ready to go? Hold your horses, will you? I'm coming. The door's open. This can't be good. Oh no. We're too late. You... you stay back. Paul, what happened? Charles, he... he something took him. I've never seen anything like it. What happened? The... the roof. 
She took him to the roof. Let's go. There was a stairway down the hall. Did... did Charles really kill people? Yes. I'm sorry. I didn't know. I swear, I didn't know. Give me one reason why I should spare you. Please, I'm not a killer. I, I had no idea you were real. I am as real as death. I thought it was just wishful thinking. And just what are you wishing for now, false guide? Hey! Don't interfere. For over 50 years I've been a slave to false guides, but none have been more corrupt and pitiful than this one. Haven't you killed enough? I was just a tool! This man is the hand that wielded it. He used it against you! You want to spare his life? I have killed countless innocents and my hands are stained with their blood. If I must kill, let it be one who deserves it. The fault died. It is time to reap what you sow. No, please! I think I found something of yours. What? What is that? It's a part of you, isn't it? <sighs> it was torn from me so long ago. Here, take it. I cannot. I am not the same person I once was. Hey, we've all changed. And sometimes we just have to accept it. Now why don't you take a hold of this and we can finish it? You... You are the most guilty of all. What? What? You know what he did. Hey, get off. What are you talking about? My death. That was self-defense. You must be held accountable. Now you've done it. You might have had it bad before, but now you're on my turf. Something is different about you. You're wrong. Everything about you is wrong. You don't know the half of it. Joey, it's not working. Of course it's not. She's too strong for you. What do you think you're doing? Trying to save your butt. Get away from her! No, that's not what I meant to happen. Wake up, Red. Damn it, wake up! This place. The light. I remember. Just head towards it. I went through once, and I was dragged back. It hurt. It hurt so much. The Link brought you back, but it's gone now. You understand? You're free. You don't have to hurt anyone anymore. My mind is so broken. But here, everything is so clear. That man, Meltzer, he lives? Yes. We stopped you before you could kill him. Is that justice? I wonder. He is a murderer. He will find ways to kill again. But you are right. It is no longer my concern. What do you mean? Live your life. Help the lost spirits of the world. Let nothing deter you. This work is more important than you will ever know. Goodbye, and good luck. Wake up, will ya? Wake up! I'm not spending 20 years over another hospital bed. I'm not. Get up or I'll kill you, you hear? Ugh. Thank God. You okay? Fine. She's gone. Gone? You sure? Yeah. She went through the light. She's gone. Good. Then I just got one question for you. What the hell were you thinking? I thought you were... Never mind what I thought. That was really stupid. Yeah, stupid. I only saved your life. I don't have a life to save. You only risked your own. Joey, I'm soaking wet. And Charles needs an ambulance. If I'm getting a lecture, I'll listen to it at home. This isn't over. No, this is crazy. It's the only way. Why change what isn't broken? But it is. We can't keep blundering around like we have. We stopped a killer ghost today. I wouldn't call that blundering. It was pure luck. 
We just happened to run into her while doing something else. So? So think of what we could accomplish if people knew about us. People should seek us out, not the other way around. What do you want to do? Put up a billboard in Times Square? No. We've got a special place nowadays. A place where you can talk about all sorts of crazy things and it's accepted as normal. What's that? The internet. What? That computer box? No way. Look, I've trusted you so far, right? Yeah, I guess. Then trust me. Just this once. <sighs> if we end up in a padded room, I'm going to make your life a living hell. You know that. Sure. Come on, pull up a chair. I'll show you what I have in mind. The link is gone, but I still remain. How long have I been here, trapped between worlds? The others could not help me. Perhaps this new one will. She is just beginning to come into her power. I just hope she is strong enough when the time comes.